It's the third and final day of Heli Base 74, a unique wingsuit flying event based near the town of Chamonix in the French Alps. The pilots conquered Les Grand Autan on day one, yet Mark Sutton, a well-known British stuntman, died in a tragic accident. Tony Uragallo, Mark's flying companion who witnessed the accident, has retired from wingsuit flying for good. Mark was just horrifying. Mark was my hero. Day two, Don de Mont. All the flyers have made a unanimous decision to fly the rest of the event in Mark's honour. Beautiful, man. What a freaking great day, man. Day two. <laughs> Today is the final day, and it's Le Caton, part of the Mont Blanc Massif. The mountain of Le Caton has never been flown before. It's 2,600 meters high and sticks up like a volcano with deep valleys on all sides. The steepness is perfect for attacking proximity flying. You see there is a little distance in between the trees and the line. Yeah, you see it's like the top and then it goes down and it flattens out and then it goes down. So where it goes down the second place, you can just connect and stay there. Event organizer Espen Fadness hopes today will be as successful as day two. I think people on day three are more relaxed. I think the main reason is that we have done this for three days now, so we're kind of getting into the game. I think also that the day two phase was very challenging and huge. So people took a couple of more steps into the confidence of, of doing proximity flying from a helicopter. The tricky thing about this phase is that it's slightly blind when you fly it to see how far down the slope you are. And if you don't pay attention to where you are compared to that forest, you will end up really low over the landing area. Mark's flying partner and good friend, Tony Uragallo, has come along today to give his support. I think you were very careful yesterday, after the first day, after the accident. They'll fly close today, you watch. Maybe not on the first jump. Once they get used to the rocks, they'll start flying closer and closer until the last jump. You see some hot stuff, I bet you. Tony's wife, Mary, has traveled to the event today to be by his side. Like yesterday, the wind will be too strong in the afternoon. But there is a great landing area, a huge grass field with no hazards. It's the ideal Heli Base 74 finale. With only a few hours of flying ahead, the helicopter sets off on the 20 minute climb to the jump. The ideal altitude is 3,500 meters. First out is Vincent Descols and Rudy Casson. There are jagged rocks, grassy slopes, tree lines, gullies, and a deep ravine. Vincent Descols takes the center line and goes for it. I just want to unleash hell and... Wow! One of the best flights of my life. Lutz Lutke and Peter Wertbar are trying a new trick, where Lutz exit first looking up, then Peter exits looking down. And Lutz tries a 180 rotation around Peter. Up next are Jockey Summer, Espen Fadness, and Ludo Vert. It's all smiles for Espen Fadness. That's candy store for adrenaline addicts. It's, it's insane. Time is running out before the wind becomes too strong. Jumping from the heli next are Dan Vickery, Dugs, and Hubert Schubert.
With all the great flying back on the ground, Tony Uragallo is thinking of getting back in the saddle. Now it's time for Mike Swanson, Vincent Raffet and Julian Bull to attack the mountain. Uh, we set up uh, perfectly on exit. Flying next to the cloud, which, were, which was beautiful on the side. We were like flying next to each other. For me, day three, Nothing like day three. This is wingsuit to wingsuit flying at its very best. Seeing the other pilots jump in Mark Sutton's honor convinces Tony to come out of retirement to get in the last load with Jonathan Flores, Matthias Wies and Carlos Pedros Schut. His wife, Mary, watches from the landing zone. I'm a little nervous, but yeah. to be expected, he'll do fine. Tony jumps last. He decides not to chase the others, but instead draws his own line and has the flight of his life. are in unison in their support for Tony. That second day was so miserable. It was the saddest day of my life. And then I saw everybody last night. They said, ah, oh, the lines are so fine. You loved it. And I went, ah. Oh. So I said, yeah, I'm coming back. This is my life. This is what I've done for 40 years. Oh, my arms are back all the way. Oh, yeah, I was diamond, yeah. Jeez, you're going so fast. They're so loaded. Oh, you know, right yeah, it was super. Yeah, it's easy, it's easy. The day is a success, bringing Hemibase 74 to a close. It's, it's awesome. The event has witnessed three days of real drama, tragedy, and extreme proximity wingsuit flying. All that is left is for the pilots to celebrate their final evening together. And for event organizer Espen Fadness to pay tribute to one flyer in particular. I want to say a few words about Mark Sutton. Mark Sutton was a highly impressive wingsuit flyer that was part of our community as a base jumper and as a sky lover. It was a very tough day on Wednesday. And I want everybody to think about Mark today. Thank you. Yeah.